right, here tonight at Shulian's, Marlowe's meeting with an old friend, Jack Powell, to reminisce about old times. And personally, I can't think of a better place to reminisce. It's in the back where the magicians meet for their sessions. Joining Jack, Ed, and I is Marlowe's close friend, Dave Solomon. With a voice like Brando's godfather and the hands of a much younger man, at age 68, Marlowe is nothing less than extraordinary. Cross cases, a red case with a blue case inside. You open up the blue case, and as you can see, we have a blue deck in there. Now, and when I remove the blue deck, I want you to notice that inside there, right in there is another deck besides this one. And this, the other deck, of course, is the red deck. Here's a close-up of the same effect. Four aces. One, two, three, four packets. And the four aces. See, the aces went on top of each packet like that. And like that. Pick these packets up. Table the packet. Snap the fingers. And we have one, two, three, four aces. Who are some of the favorite guys you used to hobnob with, besides Jack? Oh, Carmen, of course, you know, Carmen. Mm -hmm. And then Dave. How long have you known Carmen? Carmen, oh, I've known him practically all my life, you know, since I was maybe about 19. Ed, did you learn from him or did he learn from you? I mean, well, who, who was the teacher? I, I, no, he, he learned a lot from me, but Carmen had some pretty good ideas, you know, so we could basically learn from each other. Marlowe then demonstrated the D'Amico one-hand second from second centers and bottoms. This is Carmen's, Carmen D'Amico's one-hand second. That's Carmen's. Now, that's the ace of clubs. But Carmen did it always come in like this, and then that, that was that. You do it again, this, and that. And sometimes he would do it straight up like this, and that, uh, and like this, and that. Like that, and toss it Note the Marlowe trademark of tying the wrapper in a knot. That's a trademark. Mario told me one of these days I'll find these at, this at a murder scene and I don't know who it did it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a strange thing about the cigar bottom. You know, I was holding the cigar in my hand like this and practicing more or less on a close up pad. See, so you naturally you take the cards like this, like this, like this, like this. Now, as you go for the bottom card, the darn cigar hit the table and the sparks <laughs> flew over. I said, what's happening there? You know, so I deal another round like this, like this, like this. I go, and there's a darn thing hitting the table, hitting the darn close-up as sparks flying all over. I said, what's going on? So I noticed that the wrist turned, and that's why the cigar was hitting. So then I changed to the takes to the third finger. So now, if the guy watches the cigar, nothing happens, see? And that came off the bottom. So you do this and this and this, and that comes out, but nothing happens to the cigar. He was a kid that liked to do, you know, gambling while really card cheating. And he actually wanted to be a hustler. You know, he actually wanted to go out and hustle. So he was always one of those, what I call dreamers. You know, think he's going to make a fortune, you know, playing and cheating at cards. So he's always trying to talk me into going along with him, you know, to these, like the Moose Club or, or the bars and strike, you know, get a game going and then, you know, uh, see if we can book the... Uh, prospective suckers. Well, I didn't want to go, but one day Eddie Fields and I were together, and he'd come along and he talked us both into going to some bar up on Central Avenue. He says, you know, now he tells Eddie Fields, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack the cards, and I want you to give the cards a slip cut. See, like that, okay? It's all right. So now, uh, Hennish is sitting, no, this is uh, Hennish, Eddie Fields over there, and myself here, and the sucker walks in after we play a few hands of poker. You know, he says, can I sit in? So he sits in over there. So now, Henny shuffles the cards, he passes them to Eddie Fields to cut, and Eddie Fields goes, and the cards go all over. He's trying to do his Erden Ace type slip cut. <laughs> so he picks up the cards, and he puts them down, and he, the Henny takes them back, and he says, well, shuffle them, and then cut them. So the Eddie Fields goes ahead and cuts them while the hand is blown. You know, the hand he stacked is blown. 
Now, he goes around again, so again, Frank gets the deck and he stacks the cards. He passes them to Eddie, to, and he does the same thing up in the air, you know, like this, like a, like a gazelle. He didn't believe it, you know, and especially after he bragged about how he knew all about gambling, you know, and, and the moves. And the cards scatter all over again, the hand is blown. So now, the next time when Hennish gets the deck, he just shuffles fairly. Because what uh, the other work he had on it was sand work, you know, along the edges, sand work. He had to work in for that. So now, he goes ahead and he, he's, after the shuffle, he gives the deck to Eddie. He says, just cut him. <laughs> he says, just cut him twice. So now Eddie goes and cuts, right? Fine. Everything is okay. Now we're in business. Now he starts dealing, right? And as he's dealing, he's going to do a second when he sees the sand cut, right? Stealing the seconds. In the meantime, Eddie Fields is doing this. He wants to see how fine of a brief the guy's getting. <laughs> he's going like this. And Hennish is going like this. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I said, I couldn't believe Eddie Fields wanted to see how fine of a brief the guy was taking. How much did you guys make? So anyway, no, this, 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 so the story, so besides the, the sand work in there, he also had the, uh, had the punch work in there. But when I see the way the game was going, so I decided to go and start using the punch deal. So, I so during the punch deal, you don't have to look, you know, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to burn the deck. You can converse and take it nice and easy. There's no problem, see. And since I was talking, even none of these guys, even Frank, didn't suspect that I had because he didn't know I had to work in there. So anyway, we finally took the sucker, and they counted it up. It was like five dollars and seventy-five cents. <laughs> Marlowe's technique is usually flawless, as in the eidetic change. And this snap change variation. <laughs> 